Here we're going to calculate a pretty interesting double sum. So we're going to sum from m equals 1 to infinity and n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over m times n times m plus n. And we're going to use three tools in order to evaluate this sum. The first one is fairly simple. It says that for all natural numbers r, the integral from 0 to 1 of u to the r minus 1 du is 1 over r. So that just follows from the power rule for antiderivatives. And that's also clearly true for more values than just natural numbers, but that's what we'll use for our proof. So that one's not too bad, so we won't prove it carefully. Another one which we will not prove is the formula for the sum of a geometric series. And that says the sum is n goes from 1 to infinity of u to the n minus 1 is equal to 1 over 1 minus u. And that's when u is between negative 1 and 1, not including negative 1 and 1. So like I said, we're going to use this a few times, but we won't prove this either because this is kind of a standard fact. So the last tool which we will prove is this integral down here. So we've got the integral from 0 to 1 of t to the n times the natural log of t quantity squared dt is 2 over n plus 1 quantity cubed. OK, so let's get to proving this. So we have the integral from 0 to 1. We have t to the n natural log of t quantity squared dt. So there's a few ways you could do this. We're going to do it with just straightforward integration by parts, although you could transform this into an integral involving an exponential function, but that would also involve integration by parts. So the rule for integration by parts is if your integrand involves an inverse function, a good choice for you will be that inverse function. But that means that dv will be everything that's left over so in this case, dv is t to the n times dt. OK, so let's see what that gives us. So we have u is equal to the natural log of t squared. So that means that du is equal to 2 times the natural log of t over t. There we had to use the chain rule. And now we have dt. And then dv, like we said up there, was equal to t to the n dt. But that means that v is equal to t to the n plus 1 over n plus 1. Great. And now just let's recall that integration by parts formula. We have the integral of u dv is equal to u times v minus the integral of v du. So let's see what that gives us up here. So we're going to have u times v. So that's going to be natural log of t quantity squared times t to the n plus 1 over n plus 1. We need to evaluate that from 0 to 1. And then we have minus v du. So we've got some constants that we can take out. We can take a 2 and an n plus 1 out. So we have minus 2 over n plus 1. And then the integral from 0 to 1. We still have a natural log, but now our t to the n plus 1 will be canceled by this t in the denominator down to t to the n. So I'm going to write this as t to the n times the natural log of t dt. Great. OK, so now let's see what we've got. We need to evaluate this function at 1 and 0. But I think you'll notice that if you evaluate it at 1, you get the natural log of 1, which is 0. So that gives you 0. But then evaluating it at 0 is a problem because the natural log of 0 is really undefined. It approaches minus infinity. But what I will say is that you can use L'Hopital's rule to take the appropriate limit to evaluate at that bound, and you'll get 0. So in other words, this whole term becomes 0. And we're left with this thing is minus 2 over n plus 1 times the integral from 0 to 1 of t to the n times the natural log of t dt. Great. And now what we're going to do is do integration by parts again. So I'll do it on the same board, but I'll erase this choice for u and v so we can have room. OK, so just like before, since we've got an inverse function as part of our integrand, we'll let u equal that inverse function. But that means dv is going to be equal to the rest of the stuff. So in other words, we have u is the natural log of t. That means du is going to be dt over t, just by the derivative of the natural log. And now we have dv is going to be equal to t to the n dt. 
just like it was before, but that's going to make V equal to T to the N plus 1 over N plus 1. Okay, fantastic. Now what I'm going to do is keep this minus 2 over N plus 1 out in front of the whole thing. And now we're going to have U times V. So that's going to be the natural log of T times T to the N plus 1 over N plus 1. We need to evaluate that at 0 and 1. And then I have minus V D U. So the 1 over N plus 1 is a constant. I'll pull that out. And then this T in the denominator will cancel this down to T to the N. So we have minus 1 over N plus 1, the integral from 0 to 1 of T to the N dt. Great. And now, just like we had before, when you plug 1 into the natural log, we get 0. When you plug 0 into this, there's a problem. But you can fix that problem using L'Hopital's rule in the limit. So this whole term is going to go to 0, just like it did above. But now notice this minus and that minus will cancel. And we're going to be left with 2 over n plus 1 quantity squared and then the integral from 0 to 1 of t to the n dt. But then it's pretty clear that the antiderivative of this will give us t to the n plus 1 over n plus 1. Evaluate that at 1. And that's going to give us 2 over n plus 1 quantity cubed, which is exactly what we wanted to show. OK, so now we're done with this. And now we're ready to move to our main result. So I'm going to go ahead and write this as a double sum. So I have the sum n equals 1 to infinity, the sum m equals 1 to infinity. And then I'm going to rewrite these as integrals involving this formula right here. So this 1 over m, I will re rewrite as the integral from 0 to 1 of x to the m minus 1 dx. OK, great. And then this 1 over n, I will rewrite as the integral from 0 to 1 of y to the n minus 1 dy. And then finally, this 1 over m plus n, I'll rewrite as the integral from 0 to 1 of z to the m plus n minus 1 dz. OK, fantastic. But now what I can do is I can turn this product of three integrals into a triple integral. So now I have the sum from n equals 1 to infinity, the sum from m equals 1 to infinity, and then the integral from 0 to 1, 0 to 1, 0 to 1 of. So let's see what we have here. We have x to the m minus 1, y to the n minus 1, and then z to the m plus n minus 1 dx, dy, dz. And now I can exchange the order of summation and integration because of the dominated convergence theorem. So that's going to allow me to write this as the integral from 0 to 1, 0 to 1, 0 to 1. And then I have the sum, n equals 1 to infinity. The sum, m equals 1 to infinity. And now notice I have x to the m minus 1 inside of this sum. I'm going to go ahead and factor a y to the n minus 1 out, because notice that summation does not depend on m. And then I'm going to factor a z to the n out of this as well, leaving me with a z to the m minus 1 inside. And now I have dx, dy, dz. Great. And now what I'll do is notice that this term right here can be rewritten as x times z to the m minus 1. And then this whole sum, the sum m goes from 1 to infinity of x times z all to the m minus 1, can be rewritten via sum, summing a geometric series as follows. So let's see what that's going to give us. We have these three integrals. And then we have this n sum. So it's the sum n equals 1 to infinity of y to the n minus 1 times z to the n. And then this guy is going to be 1 over 1 minus xz. And so that is because we have 1 over 1 minus u, but in this case, u is equal to x times z. And then finally, we have dx, dy, dz. OK, so now the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to borrow one of these z's and turn this into a z to the n minus 1 by putting a z in the numerator of this fraction. 
and then recognizing that this is all y times z to the n minus 1, which means I can sum this series as well. And that series will sum just very, very similarly to how we summed the original series. So that is going to give us this triple integral, or I should say these three iterated integrals. And now I have a z in the numerator. And then in the denominator, I have 1 minus x times z. So that's what we had previously. And then this is going to sum to 1 minus y times z again by the geometric summation formula. So I've got 1 minus y times z. And then I have dx, dy, dz. Great. So now we have this nicely represented as a triple integral. I'll go ahead and bring this up, and then we'll start evaluating that integral. On the last board, we reduced our double sum. Again, it's 1 over m times n times m plus n, and m and n are summing over all natural numbers to this triple integral. So all three parts are going from 0 to 1. In other words, the unit interval cubed. And then we have z over 1 minus xz times 1 minus yz, and then dx, dy, dz. So I'm going to use a trick to factor this integral into more manageable parts. So I'm going to write this as the integral from 0 to 1 of z times the integral from 0 to 1 of 1 over 1 minus yz, dy, and then times the integral from 0 to 1 of 1 over 1 minus xz, dx, and then finally we have dz. So this may seem like a cheat, but notice this function right here does not depend on x, so that means we can factor it out of the x integral. This function right here does not depend on y, so we can factor it out of the y integral. And so what we've really done is factored an x integral and a y integral inside of the z integral, because notice we have the remains of whatever these two integrals are, times z, and then we're integrating that dz. So it's a pretty straightforward substitution to take the antiderivative of this. So what we will get is, so it's a pretty straightforward substitution to find the antiderivative of this. So what we'll end up with is minus the natural log of 1 minus y times z all over z. And then we have to evaluate this from y equals 0 to y equals 1. OK, so let's talk our way through that. So if we take the derivative of this, the 1 minus y times z goes into the denominator. But then we have to multiply by z, given the fact that we have to use the chain rule here. And then the minus sign also occurs because of the chain rule. OK, great. And then this guy is going to behave really, really similarly, except x and y are exchanged. So we have minus natural log of 1 minus x times z all over z. And then we're evaluating that from x equals 0 to x equals 1. And then finally, all of that is within our z integral. OK, so let's see what we get for that. First of all, we can take this minus sign and this minus sign and cancel them, because those are multiplying. And then we can notice that we have the integral from 0 to 1 on the outside. And then this z can cancel this z, leaving us a single z in the denominator. And then when we evaluate this at y equals 1, we have the natural log of 1 minus z. When we evaluate that at, the, at x equals 1, we have 1 minus the natural log of z. And then when we evaluate them at 0, we get the natural log of 1, which is 0. So in the end, we have the natural log of 1 minus z quantity squared all over z dz. Now the next thing that I'm going to do is do a substitution on this integral. And the substitution that I want to do is I will let t equal 1 minus z. So that's the same thing as letting z equal 1 minus t, which means dz equals minus dt. OK, so we're going to have to bring a minus sign out because of this minus t that gets introduced. And now we'll have the natural log of t squared in the numerator. And then this z will become 1 minus t, and that's in the denominator dt. Now let's look at what happens to the bounds of integration. So when z equals 0, t is going to be equal to 1. And then when z equals 1, t is going to be equal to 0. 
Okay, so but now what we can do is switch the bounds of integration and change the sign. So this is going to give us the integral from 0 to 1, the natural log of t squared over 1 minus t dt. So we've boiled our goal double sum down to the single integral. I'll go ahead and bring that up and we'll finish it off. So we worked our goal double sum down to the following single integral. We have the integral from 0 to 1 of the natural log of t squared over 1 minus t. Now the next thing that we're going to do is expand this 1 over 1 minus t into a geometric series. So we'll have the integral from 0 to 1, and then the natural log of t quantity squared, and then the sum n equals 0 to infinity of t to the n dt. And now again, by the dominated convergence theorem, I can exchange the order of summation and integration after, of course, like distributing this through on every term from the sum. So that's going to give us the sum of the integral 0 to 1 t to the n times the natural log of t quantity squared dt. But notice this integral inside the sum is exactly this third tool which we ended up proving. So it's going to be equal to 2. I'll bring that out of the sum. And now we have the sum n equals 0 to infinity of 1 over n plus 1 quantity cubed. But now I can re-index that a little bit. I can write that as 2 and then the sum n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over n cubed. But that is exactly the Riemann zeta function evaluated at the number 3. So we have 2 times zeta of 3, which that doesn't have any nice closed form other than itself like that. Okay, and that's the end of this video.